What's up everybody? It's Monday morning, so that's another week of training for me. My first workout of the day, I do two workouts a day, and this one is my movement workout. So I'm doing hanging, flexibility, handstands, and a little bit of flow work as well. And because I am just getting rid of this last little niggling bit of golfer's elbow, I'm deloading my grip however I can. I'm basically trying to deload the wrist flexors. And so I'm using these wrist wraps only where I can. You'll see me do a couple of single hanging variations in a minute where it's impossible for me to use the wrist wraps because I change uh, grip with each rep. I change hands. But, you know, a part of the idea of golfer's elbow is to deload the wrist flexors as much as you can and still keep working out, still keep doing your strength training. And so I'm basically, for this week and for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be using wrist wraps wherever possible to really deload uh, my grip and still be able to keep training. So that's why I'm using wrist wraps for hanging, which I would never normally do. Uh, I don't recommend using wrist wraps for hanging uh, just to make up for a lack of strength, but in the very rare case of golfer's elbow, I think there's a good case to be made for them. So before I do my hip rotations, I'm just doing a little bit of a squat warm up. This is such a good thing to do daily and has been a really big part of me developing lower body flexibility and what I like to do is when I get to my last rep at least contract the glutes and really do an end range contraction there okay there we go and then I'll just do this one just because my quadriceps and hip flexors and the lumbar extensors are so tight. So this is a nice little bit of a warm up for me. All right, here we go. So this one I'm doing for, you know, basic hip mobility, but mostly hip internal and external rotation. Wonderful exercise using strength at end ranges to help to develop that flexibility. And it's a really good mobility exercise because I'm taking my joints through full range of motion under control. You've got to be really careful though, because this can put lateral pressure on the knee and I've had a medial meniscus tear in this knee. So any lateral pressure can be really problematic. And so if you feel pain in your knee when you do this, this is not a good one for you. And there's other exercises we'd need to work on first. You know, I feel so blessed to have the opportunity every day to work on my body and get stronger and get more flexible and edge towards my big goals. It's, uh, it's such, a, such a blessing. If you're watching this video you know, and you have good internet and you have the ability to learn and you have the time to be able to invest, then, you know, you're very fortunate. And I think that we should all take stock of that on a daily basis. Sometimes we get bogged down in what we don't have and, and what, we, what we want to achieve that we haven't achieved yet. And I think sometimes it's really important to remember what we do have. And the one thing that you have if you're watching this video is you have the opportunity to learn and you have the opportunity to grow. So get up, make the most of it. Not a lot of people have that opportunity. There's a lot of people in the world that just, they either don't have the freedom or they don't have the space or the access to equipment or even the access to the information to be able to work out. So it's a really, it's a blessing, if you ask me. And I have my good days and I have my bad days. We all do. 
but Monday morning, had a good weekend of recovery, I'm feeling good. There's plenty of things that I could focus on that could stress me out, but I'm going to, I choose to focus on how grateful I am for the opportunity to, to work out, to train, to spend time with my family, to grow my business, to develop myself. These are all things to be really grateful for. So I do my hanging every day before I do my handstands because it's a really, really good stretch for the lats. It's really, really good for activating the uh, scapula stabilizers. It's a good stretch for the spine. So it really helps you to get your body aligned for the work that's coming with your handstand. It's really, really good. Starting to feel those calluses. That's the thing that really, you know, <laughs> is the challenge for me with this one. The calluses start to pull on the skin. Starts getting uncomfortable. Now's the time that I have to really just stay focused. And uh, just accept the discomfort. You know, embrace the Embrace the discomfort that comes with training. Everything that you ever wanted is on the other side of discomfort, really. From a metaphorical or philosophical standpoint. All right, there it is, five minutes of hanging, and I am grateful that I'm getting better because that is my previous personal best, and I've only done that twice now, full five minutes. Okay, and straight into my nemesis, the diagonal stretch. Man, this one challenges me. I've got something called femoral acetabular impingement and it, you know, your hip flexors are very, very tight as a result. So this is really tough. You gotta be intentional with your movement. Really focus on only moving from the pelvis, from the hips. Really strong. 
stretch that hip flexor out. is murder. for my daily wrist prep for handstands, flow, planche, anything really where you're putting weight on your hands. Come on. I think you just do a hybrid set if you can't do all 15 reps on your feet, like me. And I just go straight into my wrist push-ups, just so I'm not wasting time. I'm not interested in sitting around and wasting time. I wanna make my workout as efficient as possible. Funny, one of our long-term followers, Vinny, if you're watching, commented recently making a joke saying, I love doing wrist push-ups on the concrete, said no one ever. It's funny, I used to think the same thing when I used to watch people do things like this. I think, oh my God, how do you do it? But you know, that's adaptation. Do something for long enough, your body adapts to it, and what was once hard becomes easy. Okay, speaking of hard, this is bloody hard. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
break through some strange plateaus with a bit of finger assistance for two reps. Come on. Yeah. Oh. All right, this is another one that's really challenging for me because that slap tears in both shoulders and regaining shoulder flexibility has been very tough. Oh, oh man. And I'm using this parallel now because it pushes my hands wider apart than my dumbbells did. And it's really challenging me. It's like a whole new, you know, level of flexibility that I just don't have at the moment. I'm probably feeling probably about a two out of 10 pain when I'm doing this. But I know because I've been, you know, I had those slap tests so many years ago now, four years, five years ago now, I know that that's okay, it's not going to hurt me and the pain doesn't persist after the exercise, it's only during the exercise. Oh God, but it is brutal. And I feel the pain right in my bicep is probably where I feel it the most. Come on.
me to work around my golfer's elbow. Working end range contractions, like what I'm doing right now for my glutes and quadriceps, is really challenging work. And it's something that, in my experience, you only get better at with time. Like, I've been doing end range contractions for years now, and I feel like I'm only just starting to get good at them. All right, I'm gonna do three more rounds of this and then flow, but I'll cut to the flow. kills me it's so hard really tough on my shoulder where I had the slap tear that's the uh, same position that I was in when I did the slap tear doing a planche very very challenging for me and I still feel small pain Maybe a one or two out of 10 sometimes when I do that. But it's like max effort, so I've just gotta be really careful. And I've done so much work to get back to this point where I can even entertain the idea of putting strength through that position. 
you know. So, you know, doing movements like this is a, I guess, the final frontier. Yeah, that one, uh, whew, the first movement that I'm doing, that's a real, real challenge. Oh, it was bloody annoying having to get surgery a couple of weeks ago. I felt like I was really on a good roll with my training and, you know, you just got to restart again. You got to get yourself back on track and go through a little bit of process of progressive overload and build up to where you were before. But that is life and you just got to roll with it. So there's no use crying over spilt milk, as they say.
yeah, you just got to keep working and keep adapting and do what you can. That's all you can really do. Ah, just gonna rewatch my tutorial video in between sets. It's so important to watch the tutorial videos from your teachers regularly. Imprinting, visually imprinting on your mind dramatically improves learning and it takes many, many, many imprints to get it right. Don't think you've watched it once and you know it. Don't make that mistake. You don't. And however well you know it now, you'll know it better after you watch it a hundred more times. <clears throat> this one always wigs me out up here because I don't have a lot of space and I'd love to be in an open in a more open area. Oh. Woo. Oh. I think wishing for the perfect conditions for training is foolish. 
if we can learn to train in absence of perfect conditions, then when conditions are optimal, it's really fun. But if you rely on perfect conditions, then whenever it's suboptimal, it's a really bad experience and you find ways to talk yourself out of training. And so I really wish that I had a much bigger space than this to do my flow work. I really do, but I don't. Tough shit, get on with it. Oh. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in this afternoon's strength and flexibility workout. <laughs>